so this talk is going to be about secure channels, and in particular what we call multi-key channels, where a sender and receiver can update their keys during their communication. Uh, so suppose Alice and Bob share a symmetric key with each other, and Alice wants to use that key in order to send some messages securely to Bob. For this purpose, they need a secure channel. An essential uh, uh, primitive in cryptography to realize secure channels is authenticated encryption because it provides both confidentiality and integrity. So confidentiality means intuitively that the adversary should not be able to figure out what messages are being sent in clear, and integrity means that the adversary should not be able to forge a message without the receiver noticing it. But because Alice wants to send a sequence of messages to Bob and not just one single message, uh, the, uh, the authenticated encryption has to be stateful so that the adversary cannot replay previously seen messages to Bob and she cannot change the order of messages. Another uh, component that is often considered when building secure channels is the associated data because it captures our intuition that the actual payload has to be confidential and the payload together with some associated data, for example, some header information has to be authenticated as a whole. So to summarize, a basic secure channel can be modeled as stateful authenticated encryption with associated data. And this gives rise to stateful notions for confidentiality against passive adversaries and against active adversaries, but also to stateful uh, notions of integrity uh, of plain text and integrity of ciphertext. Uh, so the channel that I just described is basically a single key channel because the security in that channel originates from a single shared symmetric key between Alice and Bob. Uh, and you can imagine if, uh, that if that one single key is compromised, then the security in the entire channel is going to be affected. And in fact, uh, the key compromise was a concern in the development uh, of the upcoming version of TLS, the TLS 1.3. And what they did is to consider a multi-key channel instead, where the senders and receivers can update their keys during the lifetime of the channel. And additionally, TLS 1.3 deploys a two-layer deterministic uh, key schedule where we have master secret keys and we have face keys. And the first master secret key is what is derived from the key exchange protocol or the TLS handshake. And the next master secret keys are derived from the previous ones deterministically. And we have also face keys here, uh, which are used to provide confidentiality and integrity in each phase. And they are derived deterministically from the current master secret key. And this type of multi-key channel allows us to define two advanced security notions uh, which uh, say that some security should be provided even if a master secret key or face keys are compromised. The first of these security notions is forward security. And it is concerned with the full compromise of the channel or the corruption of a master secret key. And if you're familiar with it, uh, it is conceptually very close to the forward security that is defined in, t uh, in the context of key exchange protocols. So here, if uh, the adversary breaks in into the computer and uh, exfiltrates the master secret key of the current phase, which happens to be phase two, then uh, we know that security from phase two on cannot be achieved because the master secret keys there are derived from a corrupted one. However, if the keys are securely erased after they are used, we should be able to achieve security in the first phase. So in general, forward security for channels means that the communication that happens prior to uh, a corruption of a master secret key should retain its security. Uh, the other security notion is called phase key insulation. And it is concerned with the selective leakage of phase keys this time. 
So uh, you can imagine that the adversary that breaks in into the computer cannot uh, corrupt uh, or cannot exfiltrate the master secret key because it's uh, going to be probably stored in a more secure memory. However, the adversary is able to reveal the face key. And here we want that uh, the corruption of the, mass, uh, of the face key in phase two only affects that phase and not the other ones. So more generally, phase key insulation means that uncompromised phases should retain their security even if uh, past phases uh, are compromised or even if future phases are compromised. So having these uh, security notions in mind, I want to tell you a little story before I continue with the syntax and the security of multi-key channels. And this story should motivate why we need a formal treatment of multi-key channels and why it is not trivial to build them. So consider a quite natural construction of multi-key channels where we have uh, updating keys and the construction is based on stateful authenticated encryption and the sender and receiver store a sequence number in their state. And the sequence number is increasing throughout the whole channel, even uh, uh, from one phase to other phase. In fact, this construction is quite similar what, to what was proposed in TLS 1.3 draft 10. And the question that we want to ask here is, does this kind of construction achieve phase key insulation? So if uh, the phase key in phase one is revealed, uh, can phase two stay secure still? And perhaps surprisingly, the answer to this, qu that, to this question is no. And uh, this observation was made by uh, the MTLS team back in 2015. And uh, they said that if here uh, the phase key of first one is revealed, the adversary can go and, of course, drop some messages from the beginning of phase two. And then to cover up for the mismatch in the sequence numbers, the adversary, knowing the phase key in phase one, can just add some uh, valid ciphertext at the end of it. So this kind of uh, channel cannot provide phase key installation. And the fix uh, also proposed by the MTLS team is here quite simple. It was just to reset the sequence numbers at the beginning of each phase. However, this example shows why it is not trivial to build secure uh, multi-key channels and why a formal treatment was necessary. Uh, so let me show you the syntax of multi-key channels. We, of course, have an initialization algorithm, which is going to produce the master secret key for us. You can think of it as the TLS handshake or uh, gen in general a uh, key, key exchange protocol. And I have to note here that the, the initialization algorithm is going to produce also some uh, initial states. But for simplicity, I'm going to uh, omit all the states on this slide. So from the master secret key, we're going to deterministically derive a phase key. And this phase key can be used to send messages and produce some ciphertext. And those ciphertexts can be uh, received using the same phase key. And this can, of course, go on. You can send and receive more messages. And at some point, the sender and the receiver can update their keys with an update algorithm and proceed to the next phase. From the next uh, master secret key, uh, we can, again, deterministically derive a next phase key. And for the future phases, uh, the same pattern can continue. So that was the syntax of multi key channels. Let's take a look at uh, the security notions. Of course, uh, we have security notions for confidentiality and integrity. But because we have these more advanced security notions, we can, in addition to confidentiality and integrity, have forward security, face key insulation, both of them or none of them. And uh, of course, we have notions for multi-key channels. Uh, this MK uh, shows that we, we can have uh, 
uh, we can have multiple phases, but we also capture a setting where uh, the channel, uh, the entire communication in the channel stays in the first phase. So we basically practically have only a single channel. And all these different flavors for security notions uh, can be captured with a parameterized uh, security notion, which we call uh, SIK attack, where S uh, shows the advanced security, so forward security, uh, face skin installation, and both of them or none of them. And we have I for indistinguishability or integrity. We can have K, which shows the key setting, multi-key or single key, and attack can be CPA, CCA, ptext, and ctext. So now let, let's take a closer look at uh, the strongest confidentiality notion that we, that we define in our framework, which would be uh, the multi-key variant of indistinguishability under chosen ciphertext attack, which provides both forward security and face key installation. We define a game-based notion where the adversary is able to interact with multiple oracles. So of course, because we want an indistinguishability notion, the adversary can uh, query a left or right sending oracle, but the adversary can also receive ciphertext and proceed to the next phase. Uh, with the update oracle. We assume that the adversary can corrupt some of the master secret keys and we assume that the adversary can selectively reveal some of the face keys. At the end of the experiment, the adversary outputs a face and its guess for that face, which indicates whether the adversary believes that the left or the right message was encrypted. The adversary wins here if, of course, B is the correct guess for phase T, but only if that phase was not revealed and if the master secret key of neither that phase nor previous phases were corrupted. So like in many other security notions, it is very important here not to trivialize the win for the adversary because we want the adversary to be uh, successful formally in the game only if the adversary has actually an advantage in breaking the security that we want in practice. So uh, in particular this means that the adversary should not be able to receive decryptions of uh, ciphertext that are still in sync with those that were sent. Because if the adversary can do that then the adversary can just uh, can just forward the ciphertext received from here and, uh, and send them to the receive oracle and easily distinguish whether it was the, the encryption of the left or the right message. So uh, the main technical challenge in defining security notions is to decide when the adversary is allowed to see decryptions of ciphertext. Equivalently, when we when uh, should we declare the security game to go out of sync? Because once the security game goes out of sync, the adversary is able to see arbitrary decryptions of ciphertext. Uh, a more classical uh, example of this happens in the receive oracle in the experiment. And imagine that uh, we have uh, three ciphertexts sent and the first two are received. And then the adversary uh, tries to receive a third uh, ciphertext that is not the same as the one that was sent. Intuitively, the experiment here should go out of sync because the received ciphertext deviates from the sent one. However, we shouldn't do so if the face key is compromised. Because if the adversary knows the key, the adversary could have generated this uh, blue ciphertext here uh, to be a valid ciphertext, which is not going to decrypt to an error message. So if we go out of sync and the phase key is compromised, the adversary can win in the next phase trivially. Another example is uh, in the left or right oracle. Uh, for example, uh, three ciphertexts are sent and all three are received. 
And then uh, the adversary uh, does a key update on the receiver side. And here into, uh, sorry, and then a fourth ciphertext is send in the first phase already. And intuitively here, uh, we can say that the receiver has proceeded to the next phase too soon and has no way of receiving this fourth ciphertext in the correct phase. However, again, there is a catch. We shouldn't do so uh, if the phase key in that phase is compromised because if the adversary knows the key, uh, she can go and uh, receive the ciphertext already uh, before the key update and before the ciphertext was sent in uh, the first phase. So after defining uh, the security notions, we uh, explore the relations among them. And this figure here shows the strict implications in uh, the multi-key notions that we define. Uh, we have that a, a notion that provides both forward security and face key installation implies uh, a notion where we have only forward security or only face key installation. And in particular, this means that forward security and face key installation are two different and two orthogonal notions. And uh, these two both imply a notion where we have no advanced security notions. Uh, we also uh, consider a notion uh, that is single key and the entire communication stays in one uh, single phase. So basically we have a single key channel. And uh, for a single key notion, we cannot provide any forward security or face key installation. Because if you have just one master secret key or just one face key, if that key is compromised, then no security can be achieved there. We compare our single key notion to uh, the more established notion of uh, security for uh, stateful encryption and show that these two are basically equivalent up to some syntactical differences. Uh, with that, the strongest uh, notion that we have is uh, the multi-key notions for, uh, for uh, confidentiality. We have indistinguishability against a chosen ciphertext attack with forward security and uh, face key installation and uh, equivalently for integrity, we have integrity of ciphertext with multi-key and with all uh, two uh, advanced security notions. And the weakest notions are those that are single key. We have for confidentiality in CPA and for integrity uh, in PTX. And we also generalize uh, the composition result uh, uh, for authenticated encryption by Bellaria and Ampremprey to the setting where we have a multi, uh, well, we have a multi key channel and uh, different invalid ciphertexts may decrypt to uh, different error messages. To show that uh, the strongest uh, security notions that we define in our model are actually achievable, we give a generic construction which is based on non-space authenticated encryption with associated data and pseudorandom functions. Uh, the pseudorandom functions is used in a key schedule uh, where when we apply the pseudorandom function on a master secret key and zero, we get the next master secret key. And by applying it on a master secret key and one, we get the current phase key. And for defining uh, send and receive algorithms, uh, we use a non-spaced AAD, uh, where we store a sequence number of the messages as the nonce to protect against reordering attacks. And because of the attack that I uh, told you about, uh, we uh, reset the sequence numbers at the beginning of each phase. And we also authenticate the number of sent messages in previous phases to, pre uh, to prevent suffix truncation. And the receive algorithm is uh, defined accordingly. Uh, so this uh, construction is quite close to TLS 1.3 in the way that the key schedule is defined using the PRF and the, in the way that the send 
and receive messages are defined with uh, non-spaced AAD and resetting sequence numbers. Uh, however, there are some differences. For example, in TLS uh, 1.3, content type can be included in the ciphertext to show that the message is a, an alert message or, for example, a application data. And another important difference is that in TLS 1.3, uh, the key update messages are actually authenticated and sent in the message. So they can act as an end of phase indicator. And we don't need any more in TLS to uh, include uh, the number of uh, previously uh, sent messages in previous phases to prevent the suffix truncation. So to summarize, we uh, formalized multi-key channels. We gave adequate security notions for them. Uh, for confidentiality and integrity, where we can additionally have forward security and face key insulation. And we explored the relationships between them, showed that forward security and face key insulation are orthogonal, and we extended the known composition result for uh, the multi uh, key setting and the multi error setting. And we also, at the end, uh, defined a generic uh, construction that is comparatively close to TLS 1.3. This concludes my talk. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>